Hi, I'm um, uh, Kwame Nyama. So I'll be talking on uh, our work on deep algorithmic reasoning for quest answering. Um, so this work is mostly motivated by algorithms, the basis for problem solving. And our focus in this case is its application to question answering. Uh, one of the reasons for doing this is to allow us to take a high level perspective to QA um, because it highlights you know, how narrow many of the AI applications currently are. It also highlights a lot of the unreasonable assumptions that are made and also the significant dependence on human experts in several you know, parts of the pipeline. So as you see in the image on the side here, we do have um, you know, a lot of the core AI algorithms focusing on prediction and inference problems, but then there are several downstream and upstream tasks which often are handled by humans. So our main claim is that composition and a hybrid approach to algorithms reasoning for QA, you know, using a systems approach leads to you know, better solutions which are not necessarily possible by either one or symbolic or sub-symbolic methods alone. And more importantly, deep neural networks are not enough to tackle algorithmic reasoning. Uh, so algorithms, or algorithm reasoning basically focuses on the step-by-step -step reasoning uh, that's similar to how humans handle tasks, uh, mostly how we choose algorithms, how we combine them. And, you know, uh, like I said before, purely symbolic or deep learning approaches are not enough to handle this problem. Hybrid AI focuses on integrating symbolic and sub-symbolic methods. And, uh, you know, inspiration is taken mostly from DARPA's third wave of AI and Kahneman's uh, system one, system two reasoning modes. And in terms of compositionality, we are interested in the modularity and usability of the AI models. And we take a loose sort of interpretation of compositionality here because we're looking both at a high level integration of distinct components, uh, as well as a low level integration of representation and semantics. M most of the approaches to compositionality usually focus on uh, using the semantic pass trees that are generated from natural language questions to build um, architectures or neural architectures for answering questions. However, we think that we need to look beyond that because it has its limitations. For instance, to answer a question such as what we have here, which country in Europe will have the highest GDP growth rate by 2032, mm -hmm. you know, answering the, the question will depend first on whether we have data available to do sort of an immediate retrieval of the facts from the knowledge source or some knowledge source. And if that fails, there is a need to perform some kind of prediction over uh, other data that might be available. However, using a shallow pass tree means that you can't you know, decompose a problem any further. Now, to tackle this kind of problem, uh, uh, there are three desired properties that we are looking for. One is interpretability of the model, uh, meaning it should be inspectable by a human, as well as generalizability in terms of how we, uh, we generalize to different kinds of problems um, you know, the, the generali generalizing in terms of how we combine different algorithms, uh, and then robustness to look at how we deal with noisy and inconsistent data or environments. And our model is deep in two senses. One is the fact that the inference graphs that are constructed are deeper than the initial semantic pass trees that are generated. And then also the fact that we have access to neural uh, networks that are available as functions within the, you know, the, the model. And we make no assumptions about the presence or absence of data. We purely you know, assume that the knowledge or the AI system has access to a list of knowledge sources that it can access data from. So at the core of our model is the inference graph, which is constructed and expanded dynamically by decomposing what we call functional nodes, using rules that we can learn from the graph and examples. And functional nodes represent data as well as operations that can be applied to uh, successor or descendant nodes. And the functional nodes also encode some model that allows it to convert between a symbolic representation of its content as well as a vectorized representation of it. And that means that we can express the inference graph both in terms of um, a vector, you know, in, in, in some vector space as well as in a symbolic you know, mode where we can make it more accessible to humans. Now, training the model would require two possible options. One is to sort of train the whole model as a whole uh, using some kind of distance supervision signals from the questions or answer pairs. But then this is quite difficult to do and expensive to actually generate data sets for it. Another option is there to use um, existing data sets to train individual components of the model. For instance, training how we select uh, the composition operations or 
uh, aggregation operations differently from how we encode the, um, the embeddings of the neural nodes or the functional nodes. And here we take inspiration from the DART system, which looks at constructing neural architectures to solve uh, specific problems. Our preliminary work so far on this uh, problem is based on our work in the front question answering system. And as you can see from the example here, we, we try to compose the, the inference graph dynamically, you know, once a question is posed and we translate it into some form of representation here, the functional nodes, which we call a association list. The system decomposes the problem, in this case, using a temporal decomposition, finds data to instantiate um, the various nodes where variables are needed to be instantiated here, looking for the populations across different times and then combining them to generate um, a function from which you can perform the prediction because it couldn't look up the original answer to the, the question. Now compare this to um, the example here on Google where we try to ask the same question using a simple uh, query for 2020. We, we immediately notice that Google answers this by simply looking up the data from the World Bank data set and gives you a very nice graph of it. However, you, you switch the question to one which requires some kind of prediction or inference. Um, and then it fails completely because it just ignores all of that data that it has. And you know, it just goes back to using um, you know, the standard web search methods. So we think there's value in exploring these kinds of question answering problems. There are other models that try to do this. Um, auto ML, auto AI, you know, tries to automate the pipeline for ML tasks. However, they lack the ability to decompose the the nodes to explore you know, different strategies where there is the need to do so. Uh, neural algorithmic reasoning, which is fairly new, also looks at this problem. However, be, being based on a purely neural approach means that it will lack interpretability. Uh, and then there is the work on you know, large language models. Um, we, on their own, we do not think they are capable of tackling these kinds of problems. However, they are going to be very useful in fine tuning tasks, especially when they encode knowledge about the world. To conclude, um, our work is mostly for, you know, focused on algorithmic reasoning. Um, this is how we've defined the position paper. We are hoping to build this you know, further using um, or implementing it further based on what we have so far, which is mostly based on heuristics. Um, but then you know, hopefully in the next bit of work we do, we will be able to start learning automatically how to construct these graphs and predicting the necessary functions to decompose and aggregate the various nodes. Thanks, and I'm happy to take questions.